start streaming. Hi, everybody. We are going to fix this iPhone 12 with a CPU swap. In fact, Mark has already done CPU swap. And look, it worked. But something really cool happened on this one that we're going to share with you right now. I'm here today with Kenny Rogers. I mean, God, I keep doing that. With Mark Schaefer, the amazing Mark Schaefer, who does CPU swaps all day, every day. And we have not really done anything like that on this channel. So we thought this would be a, something was really cool. Whenever Mark comes up and he's like, hey, look at this, then I know <laughs> this is something that should be on stream. All right, Mark, what's up with this case? Uh, yeah, so this needed the CPU transferred uh, for various reasons. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, in the removal, this is the first time that I had worked with a 12 Pro. First time I put hands on a 12 Pro. They seem like they're different. Like the 12 Pro Max seems to be quite different mm -hmm. than the 12 Pro and the 12 Pro, the 12, right? Which, like, I, I've noticed, and this is good news for everybody, I guess. <laughs> I and mean, I feel terrible. Great news, everybody's 12 is going to break. No, that's, that's, that's terrible. So they're getting a lot of... Um, of correctable stuff. So I'm seeing a lot of charger damage. I'm also seeing a lot of cracked CPU and cracked NAND. So they are extremely, you know, skinny board that does not like, it, it doesn't have a lot of cushion for getting run over and stuff like that. So I've seen a crack in the CPU, crack in the NAND, and then a lot of repairable stuff. But it's a black box because there's not a lot of information out there for the, for these nope. guys at all. Not yet, not I, much. I'm gonna do three on video, I intended to. One had a cracked CPU, this one, and then another one I think is a really cool one. So stay tuned for that. Uh, that's gonna be an edited video, which I'll probably never post. So this may be the only iPhone 12 on our channel. All right, go mm. ahead. So in in taking the CPU off, um, not much different than, than say an 11, um, but once I got it off, I saw there's a handful of pads that are missing. Just just a few here and there in a couple of spots. What a noob. Yeah. And uh, like. And then you cried. I mean, there's nothing you can do if you, if you take <laughs> the CPU off and you look at the CPU and it's missing pads on the chip. Mm-hmm. That's it, right? Yeah. Like, what are you going to do? You just chuck it in the trash, Drink I guess. Drink a beer. Medicinal margarita. Um, no, no. You have somebody else call the customer. <laughs> you put the pads back on. What? Yeah, you put the pads back on the CPU, and then that's then what this you is. This it. is a pads. Yeah, you're doing pad repair on the CPU. Yeah. Wow. All right, I want to see that. All right, that sounds pretty All right. good. So. So this one has pad repair. I don't know. Let's see. That sounds pretty cool. So Mark, what was the what was your highlight of course week this week? Uh I mm. <laughs> Am I asking well, you at the wrong time when it's an hour after a 7-day <laughs> course week just ended? Ask me what I learned. What did you learn? I learned that I need to pay closer attention during introductions and <laughs> <laughs> to hold the jokes about running from cops until after I know whether or not we have three as students. <laughs> How many, whether we have people from federal, state, and local agencies <laughs> that may view that activity. Listen, I learned, how to, I learned how to make meth. I mean, he didn't give away every step, but definitely my product I will be higher quality now. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that Breaking Bad is pretty much spot on. I learned that you can make a guitar out of an armadillo. Yeah, that was that was interesting. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, I didn't know that was a thing either. Yeah, I love like meeting meeting like super interesting people. All right, so what are you doing now? Uh, we're gonna yank this CPU off the working board that has been backed up. Okay, gotcha. So we're going to re we're so we're going in reverse, right? So this mm -hmm. is. Um, Oh, I didn't you crack. did a CPU swap, and now you're undoing that. Yeah, I'm I'm unswapping this CPU so we okay. can look underneath it and see right. why this, this was what is atypical. This, 
thing here. This chair. Is it this chair? Yeah. There we go. You're in you're in the shot, Mason. Oops. <laughs> Look, it's new Parker! Oh my god, I found new Parker! Alright, get out of here, Parker. There we go. All right, so let's get this under the microscope and yes, let's do. Boom! Look at that. All right. Oh, now I'm in the I'm in the middle Mark, of the CPU. Mark, asks if you are wearing a wig. I am not. This is. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. All natural. I'm gonna do it. Everybody has <laughs> has been wanting. <laughs> to, to touch the mane. Do you want to get a, get a, get a handful? Good, it's really good. fun. Yeah, the students have been obsessed with, uh, with Mark's hair um, a lot. Are the you, beard as well. There have quite, been, a lot been, of, been a quite a few compliments in the chat already. Is oh, wow. Mark wearing right. a beard? Okay, so we got, we got some, some pads that are missing that were not necessary, and then... Uh, How do you know they were not necessary? Uh, because, well, you can't see in ZXW what the lines are, but you can see what they go to and from that deduce what the lines are. Give me an example. So if I see the line running to a chip that I know is related to cameras, okay. then I'm not concerned if it's missing that pad or if I How see that it's ground. How you have any idea where the camera chips are in the iPhone 12? Because the camera chips talk to the connectors for the camera. So, so that's what you did. You said, yeah. oh, crap, missing pad, uh -huh. I'm screwed. Yep. And then you say, where does it go on ZXW? It goes to mystery chip, which has no labeling or anything. Click around in mystery chip. Mm -hmm. And then when you see it goes to camera, <laughs> you, what kind of like dance? Did you do a dance or did you just, you know, like shout out? Well, like, no, that did, I was just like, oh, okay, good. It's I only have to do the three that I already know go to uh, Hydra or whatever it's called now. New Hydra. Yeah, 1614. Yeah. 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 So there's so, a new TriStar slash Hydra slash we don't know because there's... Uh, no information out there. Well, I think you should get the, I think you should be able to name it. The USB <laughs> permission chip. What makes sense? TriStar Hydra Medusa. Uh, maybe. Yeah, that's what I'm going with. The Medusa chip, okay. <laughs> All right, so like one of them went to uh, TriStar Hydra Medusa. Medusa. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's what it these, is. these guys over here, I think, think are probably going to be one of the 1v2 CPU rails. Um, they connected in a bunch of places, so it's, it's definitely some like power line for CPU. So we know like if you looked at a CPU that you could see like the border would be 1v8 or you could see your SD RAM, you could see a little pocket that would be like a CPU, PPCP, yeah. PPCPU. So, these... so you found one that was speckled around and you said that's going to be CPU power. Yeah, and uh, so I just decided to go ahead and do those two anyways, okay. just to be sure. Okay. Um, and yeah, so I put, well, I, we can show how to do it with the, with the, the loose junk CPU. I can do a reconstruction of, of the surgery. It's an accident reconstruction, <laughs> yes, as, as CPU. Um, but so yeah, so, so we had some, some students that were here from digital forensics field this week. And one thing that they, that they kind of told us that they were surprised to learn is that you actually can do micro soldering to repair missing pads, torn pads on important chips themselves, like the NAND, like the EMMC, like the CPU. And that was news to them. And, th and they had actually been like considering those, if you can't read the yeah, chip. If you knock, if you knock a necessary pad off an EMMC, then somebody, somebody is getting out of jail free. <laughs> right. So that's how we learned how to make meth. Okay. Now you're going to right. teach us all that that is not the case, that even if you are missing a pad on an essential chip like the CPU, that that is something you can still come back from and make it work again. So mm -hmm. do you have a missing pad on here or are you going to have to create that? 
Uh, I mean, there are some. I'm looking for for a good candidate for the example, because um, this is this is a CPU that I just kind of yanked off without really, you know, taking care. Um, and Travis wants to know if this is going to be ball smashing. No, not ball smashing. This is legitimate pad repair. Yes. All right. I think I think this guy's going to work. Okay, so we are missing some some dudes. Let me get out of the way. Let me let me hide. No hide behind Mark. There we go. All right. Now, how do we get missing pads? Like, what's up with that? Does it come from cleaning it or what? Um, it, it can come from if the phone has already suffered an impact. They can be already like really loosely connected, and then you take the CPU off and. There's, you know, it's typically at corners, there will be some that the pads just stay on, okay. or, you know, it could be from not using enough heat when you're taking it off. Um, or, you know, it could, you could also do it from being too aggressive when you're wicking. All right, so first thing we got to do is uh, when when the pads come off of these chips, it leaves kind of a circle that's under this yellow coating. Um, I don't know how well this camera's picking it up. Let me have the mouse but, and let's minus front cam. All right. So what are you saying? So there's a very, very fine, like, trace to a tiny via right here. And it comes out, and, and when the pad In comes off... In your mind there is. What yeah. the hell? I mean, what? It's it's there. You can see a, a trace? Yeah. Is it, like, clear colored and invisible? It, it is very hard to see. Okay. If you say so. Okay. Oh, it looks like this might be this might be a ground one. Yeah, I don't have a border there. Let's check this guy. Somebody said it looks like some pads didn't even have solder applied to them. Uh, well, so those he, those would be pads where the 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 uh, ball got left on the board rather than coming up with the. So how can you tell the difference between a right, missing pad and a pad that maybe if you just kind of scratch down a little bit, you'll see the pad? Uh, wait, say say again. The how do you know that pad's missing and not just, you know, like kind of under there a little bit and you should just get a soldering iron and tin it up? Because uh, that, that's never the answer. Mm. I think with students, we notice a lot of times... I mean, there's a reason why I had to make one of my new catchphrases, scraping is raping, because if you, if you don't see the pad, you've got to really study the area and figure out, is it because it's missing or is it because it's oxidized or corroded? And in this case, it's because it's missing. It looks just like the, the rest of the chip in that section. All right, so we are... Where where'd my good tweezers go? Oh, oh god, they're getting they're getting mixed in with Jess's junk tweezers. I'm not sure. So I would we're say working junk. on this guy here. I think is going to be a good candidate. We can take a diode mode reading on that. Brian C wants to know why you don't fill with UV glue first and then scrape. Um because I I don't find it necessary to fill with the UV glue first. I do that after. I love how one of the mods so there has, we go. We got a said it's okay to say scraping is raping. 0.27 there. So this is a right. multimeter in diode mode where you've got red probe on ground, which is the corner. Yep. Corner's always ground. And then... And then making sure I'm not touching the ball next to it. Uh, all right, we're gonna we're gonna get rid stuff. of that ball. Get rid of what? Oh, you're gonna get rid of that because <laughs> it's ground. Uh, because I don't want that to interfere with taking measurements for demonstrative purposes. Okay, I see. 
That is, and that is okay, the yeah, finest fine point, like punch your finger in, in you know, like a pin cushion needle probe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. Because it He's, looks enormous. This is very small. All right. Q-tip and oh. alcohol. Here's some alcohol. All right, we got alcohol. What would happen if you didn't have any alcohol and you just like poured a little bit of beer out and used that? Would that work? No. Q-tip is right over there by the super cold. You can substitute Everclear, but not beer. Do you actually have Everclear like at home? Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it did a few weeks ago. We had a party. Brian wants to know if you can file the needle smaller. File the needle small. Oh, on the on the he probes. On the, oh yeah, you, definitely. You can you can file can. anything. All right. Into oblivion. So now we are going to put just a dab of green right in the center. Are you putting green on my on my screw tray? Yes, I am. Gross. That's like All right. eating off the floor. And I don't know if we want to get this in hand cam. Cam, watch this incoming. All right, so I got a little dab of green there. We're gonna add the some alcohol to thin it down because as it comes out of the tube, it is way too thick to do this job. It would just leave a giant blob in the middle. Nice. All right. Now, are you going to use one of the Kenny Rogers hair as a paintbrush, no. that's like my favorite technique. No, I'm no. not going to do that. What? All right, going to put a little bit over here so that I can just get. A I tiny think that you really bit. should because I think that I think that then you could sell Mark's luxurious luxury hair, individual hairs as UV glue paintbrushes <laughs> and. That would really, there'd be a market for that. I'm telling you. You had a lot of people going nuts over the, over the, over the, the look. All right, so what are we doing here? What's the point of this? Uh, just to get a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of it in the center of that hole, which uh, in the center of the, where the missing pad is because there's ground under that that oh. I don't want my okay, so new pad to stick one. to. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna hit that with some UV real quick and cure it up and then take it back off of the uh, part that I wanna to solder to. Uh, Micro Repairs is, wants to know if you're interested in making a pube brush or maybe buying one, I can't really tell. I'm gonna go with no. <laughs> That's a hard, hard pass, Micro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not that kind of channel. DJ Cray says, sounds like a gamble to do it that way, but I guess if you know how to hold them, know, them, know when to walk away, know when to run. <laughs> All right, now we're cured. How many times has this chip been removed? Doesn't look like a virgin chip. Oh, yeah, this, this one is just for demonstrations. This is, my, this is my class example of here's how you can fuck things up. Yeah. All right. So what are you doing now? You're trying to get back. Oh, you're trying to like. Yeah, getting back just, just a little up. bit there. All right. Oh, your mom's up. on stream. Your mom says. Hi, mom. I'm going to steal his hairbrush next time I visit the grandkids and make a fortune on eBay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you are. <laughs> I think that you should take a, like a, a picture from this stream of, of Mark. Here, get a good, get a good one. <laughs> and uh, and that should be uh, uh, smile for the camera, Mark. Your mom needs an eBay listing. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right. So what's happening now? Now I'm putting some flux on there. I'm going to tin that up, and then we're going to get to the fun part. Brian C wants to know. What it says, you can just throw in a 256 and restore via iTunes. That's true if you didn't want data. I guess. All right. Oh. Oh, your mom says, got it. Also, might have, 
kind of doxed your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Uh-oh. All right, so you're trying to tin the nub of the... What do you even call yeah, it? There I mean, we it, go. Is it even called a, a trace in a via in, when it's inside a chip? I It's... The New magic. <laughs> I think you need something for scale. I'm going to get you something so that everybody can see how tiny this is. Something that every repair shop has on hand for all sorts of things. Here you go, Mark. Hold up. Yeah, you know, something that. Oh, yeah, a grain of rice. Yeah, we'll put a little grain of rice down there with it. There you go. All right, here we go. This is uh, what one of the grain students gave of us rice the background. in the shot. Whoa. <laughs> Wait, hold on. we got to get rid of us. We're distracting. That is a grain of brown rice, the good kind. Yeah. The kind that actually fixes phones. Unlike that stupid white rice that's useless. Yeah, that looks, that kind of looks like a maggot. Are you sure that's actually, <laughs> and that's pretty gross. Yeah, so, so, yeah, why don't you cut it down to be a quarter of a grain of rice is going to be monstrous. We can't see, push it up. There we go. Yeah, so it, what's that, about a quarter, or is Yeah. It, yeah. A quarter of a grain of rice. Yep. Yeah. All so, right. Seriously, I think you should leave that on the CPU while you're working on it. <laughs> okay, back, back to it. So I've I've gotten just just a little bit of the exposed copper tinned, um, but I, I don't want to really rub on that because that is, you know, it's it's only a couple of molecules thick. And scraping is raping, I guess. Yeah. So then I have shaved off a tiny piece of solder. I could use solder paste as well, uh, but this is, this is what I'm doing in the moment. Shaved off a tiny piece of solder off of my... Uh, push it up. Uh, push it up. There we go. So that's just a piece of regular wire solder? Yeah. Okay. And just a little shaving of it. And I want just a little tiny bit to get on there. There. So, uh, why not use paste? Um, I don't know, because paste has too much flux in it, and it's it moves around in unpredictable ways. I like I like a nice little solid chunk that I can put exactly where I want it, and it's going to stay there. That's what she said. Uh, that is very tiny. All right. So now we're on there. Now we can come in with a little hot air. Spectre says he prefers lizards to dry his phones out. Me too. Heavily yeah, prefer lizards. It, it obviously. works better if they're thirsty. <laughs> thirsty lizards. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And now that chip is gone. <laughs> it's right at the bottom. Push it up a little bit. There you go. All right, so now you are trying to get there we go. a piece of actual solder. Like you're kind of trying to tin the actual whatever you call it within the the meat of the chip yeah all right now we got to put a pad on all right so where are you going to get a pad hold up whoa wait hold on all right what do you have here i have dun, 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 dun. the Wiley Here repair go, spot welding piece. An unusual jump wire experience mm. starts with your good friends Wiley patch solder lugs. Yep. <laughs> these for these use, are my good friends. For use with the noble superb show the style of master. Yeah. Users. Yes. <laughs> All right. So these are the Wiley solder lugs available at iPadRehab.store, and these I would say ninety percent of crap that we try as new products from China end up going right in the trash can as this is dumb. These mm -hmm. have actually made the cut. These I've been I've been using them. I you know plan to make a couple of videos. I wouldn't replace the smash ball technique with these things because smash ball is so quick for data recovery, but for repair, if you're repairing those split board models, 
these are really good, but especially, and I mean, this is, there's nothing else like this out there now if you have to do this exact work. Repair on the bottom of a chip where you're missing some pad. So these are, these are fantastic, and we're going to get out of the way so that you can see them. So what are you doing? Uh, trying to get one out. Start with the round part, not the long strip. Uh, yeah. That's the sometimes, way. Sometimes I don't that think the long strip too great can, can, I think the adhesive on there is stronger than the actual like strength of the Yeah, wire. and I don't need the tail anyways. Yeah. All right, so this thing is, a, is really a sticker. So he's peeled off this little pad sticker, and now he's going to try to attach that pad sticker to this torn pad to replace it. Yeah, well, the back of the thing doesn't have any adhesive. Otherwise, it wouldn't solder on very well. Mm -hmm. But yeah. All right, so now, because I'm going straight on top of where the pad was, I don't really need the tail. Um, it does come with some that are cut just as circles, circles yeah. uh, but it doesn't have... The, the, the ones that are the right size for this particular job ha all have tails. Brian C. is a big fan. Brian C. has used them, and they are amazing. Spectre says, talk about ethereal trace repair, my god. Yeah, this is really leveling up from the giant, enormous traces that you used to have. Oh, yeah, tight, I know. Tight rope walk across the tiny place where a screw <laughs> was drilled into much of an iPhone 6. Did you know that I did a trace repair on stream last week for really? iPhone 6? Wow. Yeah, and I did. I, I put it on top of a quarter so that you could see how, how tiny the, the whole thing was. Cool. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. All right, so we're going to go see, back. See, that would be another thing. Like, that's cool, right? To, to fix something that's so small that I'm operating on George Washington's eyeball on a quarter. Ugh. Like, that's inherently cool. Killing Did me with this blue. It, this blue mat is killing me. Like I always say, Mark. Mm-hmm. I know what you always say. Uh, fill it in. A poor workman blames his tools. Uh, no, I believe the saying is a uh, master craftsman only uses the best tools. Uh, pretty much the same thing. All right. Is this a CPU? Yes, it is. What's the smash ball repair? If you could give a short description. You can Put search the channel for easy smash ball repair which is an awesome video that I should probably just make another I, one of. I can give a short description. You stick your balls on it, and then you smash them. That's what she said. She better not <laughs> say that. <laughs> Wasn't that a fun game that I just heard you recommend not an hour ago? Greg repairs GPUs. All right. Now we should be on there. So you um, applied it with what looks like your your kind of like normal normal nothing special about that hot air. Um. Well. What are you doing right now? It looks like you're about to do a fancy nose pick. Oh, I'm I'm cleaning. Uh, the flux away. Where'd you get a Q-tip that tiny? I grabbed a little bit of cotton fluff off of a Q-tip and wrapped it around. There we go. Much less chance of catching on it and ripping it off. Push it up a little. There we go. Good? That's very nice and shiny. All right, now let's see if we have a diode mode reading and not a short to ground. Okay. There Diode we are. Mode. Yeah, three, yeah, 300, three. which is what it was before. The ball, I measured 270, but that was the ball above it that was throwing me off. That's why I All knocked right. it off. So very good. So that, I mean, that looks pretty normal. Yeah, the last step would be to put a little bit more of this green just around the edges. 
just to kind of strengthen it a little bit. Yeah, this is very thinned out UV mask. Now, would mask. you be able to, would that just wipe away if you like, ran an iron across it or do you think it would oh it would, it, it, would it would hold up to maybe one or two passes with an iron with no pressure um but yeah it would not much that is really thin so then we cure that and then this will be strong enough to stick into a stencil reball the cpu and so show us the one that you did so now now with that context that we can understand Travis would like everyone to know that I'm a pro ball smasher, which is absolutely true. <laughs> Thank you, Travis. All right, so now kind of walk us through what we're looking at here. Oops. So it was this guy. Um, I determined this one. Mark, you have pretty big balls. <laughs> I determined these, kind of pointy. these three were not needed, but that one was. Okay. Um, so. And that was also missing Mm -hmm. at just like the one that you just walked us through that technique. So you yeah. recreated that pad so that you could restore this CPU and without it, it was not going to work. Right. So one, two, three on the bottom, you said not important. Yeah. All right. Very, very cool. So then from there, you reballed this, you reballed this CPU. Standard procedure. Yeah, just Anything like else? just like any other, and stuck it on there. Move the other chips over. Bob's your uncle. Bob's your uncle. <laughs> All right, so boot it up, and now you've recovered data from from that one. Yep. Very cool. Very cool. How often have you had to do like trace repair or pad repair under a chip? Not often. It's really I only see it in cases of either severe physical damage or um, accidental technician, like stuff where somebody has been doing stuff they shouldn't have. Gotcha. Scraping mm. is raping. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're, you're like basically the, the rape counselor <laughs> comes in after and then tries to make everything okay again. It's an important work, Mark. Very, very good. Well done. All right. So that is... You know, pretty amazing magic, I think. CPU repair of torn missing pads on the chip itself. So very cool. I really like the 12 stuff because I kind of like the fact that there's no information out there because then you really have to level up the detective work. So yeah. Like, I'm excited about um, one that nice. I that I am trying to make an edited video out of. It's, it's, like, it's like doing a jigsaw puzzle when everything's face down. Yeah, where it's all, it's all just black. You know, very cool. All right, so that's it. Don't forget to sign up for MacBook Course September. We want to see some of you guys here. This is the second and probably only MacBook Course we're going to do. I don't know, maybe. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see. super fun the first time. And um, we've got, if you are coming to this channel because you are a digital forensics professional, then we just had a great time with some folks that were from a uh, federal, state, or local agency. <laughs> and we're really looking forward to bringing you a video very soon about how much fun we had changing them from when they came in asking whether or not there would be a dress code to um, running over some phones with some cars and all kinds of shenanigans. So we're looking forward to bringing you that video. So come and find us at iPadRehab.com and click training. We're doing a law enforcement only course, I think this January. So check that out and we will see you next time. Great job, Mark. Thanks. All right. And <laughs> we're going to hit stop streaming.